I'd jump on here because I was getting ready to make something. I was like, oh, let me get into a video because then they'll know how to do it. So today I'm going to be making um, a rose essence. And you can apply this to basically any flower petal or such that you want to use. Um, well, you don't even have to use flowers. You could use leaves. You could use anything. Make sure that what you're using isn't poisonous. <laughs> you know, uh, do your research. Take a drink. <laughs> so, it's a really hot day out today. It's, it's only like 9 o'clock and it's already like 92 degrees out. It's going to be a scorcher. But these are my favorite days to make those last spring flower uh, essences. And an essence isn't necessarily medicinal um, in an action way. It's, it's more of like we're catching the energy of that particular flower or plant. Um, that being said, there is some properties imbued into the water. So, you know, again, make sure you're not using something poisonous. You're like, oh, I like essence of nightshade. Don't do that. <laughs> so today we're going to be doing rose petal essence. And it's super just, well, I guess I'm on a kick here, but it's sexy. It's, it's just, I don't know, maybe it's because we're spring going into the summer. It's like life explosion and like rose essence energy is just good for your heart, good for getting things flowing and just feeling. And it doesn't necessarily mean with another person, with yourself, just being sensual. So, um, actually, I talk about it pretty deeply on my Instagram account, at She's of the Woods. If you haven't read about it there yet, you could probably scroll through and find this, like, super sexy picture of, um, a wet rosebud, and you can read all about it. Um, so, this is gonna be, these are pretty easy, but they're also, like, there's just more steps to it than the, the past videos, but it's not hard. It's not hard. You can do this. You already know how. You just have to remember. So, the first thing you're going to want is some spring water, um, or live water in general. Since you will be ingesting this, if you use river water, please filter it through like a Berkey filter or something. Um, you know, don't give yourself fucking Giardia trying to make yourself feel more sexy because that won't achieve <laughs> what you're wanting. Um, I'm using spring water. Now you can use tap water, it's just that, you know, it's got chemicals and such in it, like chlorine and fluoride and all that. Um, and it, we're really looking for live water, not been like chemically altered water. Uh, so, I'm using spring water, and you know, it's really, really easy. You probably can't see my head now standing up, but I'm gonna, you'll probably see my boobs pretty good though. <laughs> I'm gonna pour in a few cups of spring water. And I'm going to take these beautiful pink heirloom rose petals and we're just going to carefully place, you're not going to mix them in, you just want them to be on the surface. And if you're making one with, um, let's say you're doing like elderberry flower or something like that or like hawthorn flower, that time's passed, but you want just the flower in there, you don't really want the green stem. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Firewood. Okay. So we're just gonna, you're, we're just covering the surface. You're not trying to mix this in. You just want it to sit on the top. Now you need to use a crystal or a glass bowl. Crystal is best, especially these cut glass bowls because it really um, magnifies the sun in all different kinds of ways and pulls a bunch of energy in there. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, hippie shit. <laughs> But, you know, they have scientifically proven that energy is a thing. So you can't, <laughs> you can't really debate that. Um, and that everything we eat and take has energy. It all has energy. So we're just going to put the energy of this rose into the energy of this spring water. And we're going to use the energy of this crystal bowl to help magnify it. Now, if you're going to use a crystal bowl, like if you have something of your mother's or your grandmother's or you found in the thrift store, Please test it to make sure it's lead free. Um, a lot of these bowls, these old bowls, um, have lead crystals. And you need to be careful. This one was my grandmother's, but um, a testing kit online you can buy, they're like five or six bucks, um, told me that it has no lead in it. And I did a double, a different test too, because I, I just didn't, I wanted to get like multiple results before I started using it um, for anything beyond decoration. 
but you can use just glass too, clear glass. It just needs to be clear. You don't want to use something that's not clear because then it's really just only getting light from here and then sun changes. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And this is going to be like a put together video because I'm not going to be able to carry this and the camera out to where I got to put it next. So, and this has to sit all day. So, I'm just covering up every little space. I could just, you know, but why not take time to do it with some intention? Don't go to rush everything we do. So I'm covering um, every little space of water, all little gaps. Plus, um, when you, uh, I know some people aren't going to want to hear this, but when you take out one petal at a time of whatever flower you're working with, you can make sure there's no bugs on it. <laughs> bugs are a part of nature and they're just, they're definitely going to be in roses. They like to get in those nooks and crannies. And so each little petal I take out, although I, I let these um, sit in a colander for about 30 minutes before I came in here and kind of let the bugs run off their little holes. But uh, there wasn't that many, but that way we're not infusing the energy of a bug. <laughs> so I've got this pretty much covered now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take this outside. So I'll see you there in a minute. Brought it outside where the sun's definitely shining and I'm gonna sit it out here basically until the sun starts to go down and see all the light getting kicked through the crystal here and we're just gonna let the sun infuse the energy of these beautiful roses into the spring water um, and then when that's done we will add um, some good honey liquor um, and I'll talk to you about why I like to use honey liquor instead of brandy next um, but that's all there is to that. Just let her sit. And uh, you need sun though. You can't do this on like a rainy day or anything. And it's good to keep her up off the ground on something because if not, you know, bugs and animals and such and stuff like that. Um, and you, again, try to put her in a place where um, the sun's gonna hit her all day long. So you might have to move her now and then if, if you can't, if you don't have a all encompassing area, it doesn't get shade. So, all right, we'll see you when it's time to strain and such. Okay. Now that our flowers have been sitting in that unforgivably hot sun all day. <laughs> oh, okay, just let you know, so hot out today, and I just got done making some um, wild rose hydrosol for the shop update on the 30th of June. It was filming of this year or whatever and um, it's hot in here and I put this clothes back on to make a video for you <laughs> it's so hot in here okay so you've got your flowers after they've been sitting in the sun all day long infusing your energy into your live water um, and your crystal bowl helps you do that so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to strain the flowers into here I'm going to pretend like I'm good at straining, but I'm going to spill this. <laughs> I do every time. So I might just try to bunch these up. See, the top of the petals are still dry. If they didn't sink, they didn't submerge. Any of that. There's a nice little air bubble on the bottom of this crystal bowl. Oh. Ooh, you can feel the heat coming off of it. It is hot today. Okay, so that is your um, your pure flower essence. This is a rose petal. Forgive me, I've had like a whole day of doing stuff in between the videos, so I'm just kind of off of it, trying to remember where I was at speaking wise. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to dilute this. Some people will give you this like big complicated rundown that you need to take one drop of your flower essence per however milliliters of a tincture bottle and then that's your mother tincture and then you can add that to this stop don't make it so complicated for people jeez <laughs> i want you to cut this because it's got lots of energy in there you don't you don't want to take that straight that's like too much of a rush you know so we're going to cut it so we're going to add you know a couple cups of spring water of your live water so i'm going to fill it to there 
I put these uh, mason jars are great for the ball brand because they have the measuring cup lined on them already. So we're going to put that to right about there. Okay. So now, now it's not so strong. The next thing we're going to do is this. This will go bad. This will go rotten, moldy. You don't want to get yourself sick. Water goes bad. So we are going to imbue it with some honey liquor, not liqueur liquor. Um, the reason I like to use honey liquor is because a lot of people like to use brandy. And then I want to add a couple cups of this, about half of it, maybe a little more. This makes it pretty warm. A lot of people like to use brandy, but brandy, what people don't realize is it has its own unique energy. Brandy is made out of distilled fruit. And uh, so when you add that to this, if you're not using, if you're not thinking, you're, you're adding in this different energy. And um, honey is just really neutral. And I think it's because, like, the bees, like, I feel like it's because the bees, like, make it from so many different things. Darn video cut me off. So, I'm back. <laughs> so, the reason I use, I feel like the honey is um, neutral because the bees use so many flowers and such. I'm going fast. Um, <laughs> Uh, to make it so it's like there's so much it just becomes neutral. Anyhow, you want to add that in because if not, it'll go bad. So that is literally all it takes to make a flower essence. I'm sorry for the rushed ending here, but um, now you just take this and you just take and put it in your tincture bottle and take a couple drops at a time. That's it. Um, I like to let it sit for a week or two to let all of, like the energies kind of like I don't know come together and like just I don't know it, it kind of like ages it really well. Um, and you can use it any time that you're just wanting to pull in like more like, I don't know, feelings and energy from any plant you choose as long as it's not poisonous. So I hope you enjoyed my super crop together video <laughs> and my cutoff ending and um, I will see you guys next time.